Hey everyone, my name is Bill Collins, Marketing Manager with Magix. And in this video, we're going to take a look at SoundForge Pro 16. Now, before we get started, I think it's important to talk about how SoundForge is different than a traditional multi-track DAW like a Pro Tools or Reaper. SoundForge is known as a digital audio editor, but it does way more than simply edit audio waveforms. I think SoundForge truly is an audio Swiss army knife. It has loads of different tools, for a number of different audio tasks. Whether you're doing simple recording like voiceover or mastering or editing, sound design, batch conversion, you name it, there is a tool in SoundForge for that audio task. Now, it doesn't record multi-track audio. This SoundForge is not a tool you would use to record a band or produce music. It really is a companion to your existing DAW um, you don't need a multi-track DAW to use SoundForge. And there are people that use SoundForge day in and day out as their main digital audio workstation for recording things like voiceover or doing editing, mastering, you name it. Now, the first thing I want to show you is something that we can do is a process that we can do with SoundForge not even being open. So here I'm on my desktop and I'm going to simply right click on this WAV file and which brings up the Windows context menu and choose SoundForge. Now, SoundForge doesn't even need to be open, does not even need to be open in order to uh, do certain audio tasks. So for example, let's say I wanted to do something simply like convert a WAV file to an MP3. Well, we can do that here right in SoundForge. Okay, so I can choose my render format. And as you can see, we have loads of different file format for, to choose from. And I think this is something that is uh, worth mentioning here is SoundForge has been around for a long time. And there are a lot of file formats that you don't really see that often anymore. However, it's good to know that some of these features are available if you need them. So I'll choose MP3. Also, we have templates to choose from. And then choose OK. Quick and easy. OK, so let's go back into the application. So here we are, SoundForge Pro 16. And let me just give you a quick tour of the interface uh, because I think it's important to know that SoundForge is incredibly flexible. This is not a static interface. Things can be easily moved around. And, and windows can be moved, reordered, and you can set up your own layout. So let's check out the view menu under window layouts. And as you can see, we have a default layout. This gives us much more screen real estate for our audio waveforms for editing. We have a mastering layout. Now with that, what we see is obviously the waveform but we can see our loudness meters, uh, our explorer, so we can bring in, bring in files from our drives. We have a spectrum analysis, and then we have our plugin chain. Interface, this is a great layout for mastering work with our meters, summary information. We can add metadata to the file when we're finally done. So it's a great layout for mastering. But again, you can create your own layouts if you'd like. Go to Window Layouts and save a new layout if you wish, and uh, that'll be, be ready for you whenever you want to bring it up. So SoundForge makes a great companion to a audio work, digital audio workstation like Ableton Live and others, uh, or video editing software. Um, Vegas Pro by Magix, uh, you can also round trip with SoundForge. So if there are some audio files that you wanted to do some editing or some sound design and uh, take it out of Vegas, bring it into SoundForge, you can do some processing and bring it back. Um, <clears throat> and you could do that with other video editing software as well. So let's talk about sound design a little bit. So let's talk about sound design and why I think SoundForge is a great tool for sound design. So number one, um, it round trips with workstations, as I just mentioned. 
And that's really handy. And it's nice to be able to get the audio that you're looking to process out of that workstation into another workspace to do some processing. Um, so here we are. I have a just kind of a real ambient kind of noise sound file. Let's say I want to start applying just some processing and create a variety of different versions. I can do that here. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of this and then paste it to a new window. Okay. And I can actually do the exact same thing here again. So I have a couple different versions. All right. So in sound one, I could start applying some processing here using the instant action menu. Let's talk about instant action a little bit. So what this does, as you can see, it has a lot of quick, quick access to commonly used tasks. So under the workspace tab, under the workspace menu, I can bring in different layouts. I can access my VST settings and bring in different meters. Under the effects tab, I have a bunch of different processes that I can use here. So let's just apply some reverb to this one. And let's check this out. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. I'll choose okay. All right, let's go to sound two. And I'm going to reverse this. And I'll apply that reverb as well. Now, I haven't touched the original. And I have two quick variations, and I could keep going with this. So hopefully you can see how powerful this is as a sound design tool. Now I can export these and bring them into my video editor and start experimenting with these different sounds. So SoundForge is also great as a mastering workstation. So as I can see here, I have my waveform up in the window. And over to the left, I have a chain of plugins, uh, a dynamic EQ, a compressor, a limiter, and a meter. And down at the bottom, I have a bunch of file information and a summary file information. All of this, I can go in and edit the metadata if I wish before I render the file. It's important to note that SoundForge also supports DDP or Disk Description Protocol. And this allows you to export a file that goes along with your audio that when you send, <clears throat> when you send a record out to be duplicated, uh, either CD or vinyl, it sends the DDP file to the facility and then they can read start times and things like that. So that's really useful and an, and an essential part of the mastering process. So I wanted to point out a few really helpful things that are in the tools menu of SoundForge, starting with the batch converter. So there are times when you'll need to convert a bunch of files, whether that be you know simply wave to MP3 or something like that. Um, that's real, that's very basic with SoundForge, you can apply effects to during the batch conversion process too. So here, if I click on effects and I can apply all the different effects that are showing up in my effects list. So I could put on a high pass filter or any number of things like that. I can apply metadata to all these converted files. Uh, the name of the artist, engineer, creation date, you name it. Export formats. If I wanted to change the format, I could do that here. I can send these files to different folders. If I have a something like a drive that is loaded up to a cloud storage, to a cloud storage drive, I could do that as well. So super useful to have the batch converter tool built into SoundForge.
Another really useful thing is the scripting feature. This allows you to apply automated tasks to things that just take a long time that you maybe don't want to go in and do for each particular file. Things like normalize and a graphic fade. If Let's say you're working with a lot of dialogue and uh, you want to quickly normalize it and add a short fade, you can apply something like this. So this can really speed up the whole process. And the next thing I want to show you here is that SoundForge supports uh, ARA or ARA. And this allows you to open a file into an application like Melodyne or Spectre Layers. Melodyne is well known for tuning, so tuning vocals. And Spectre Layers is a, an amazing <laughs> application, but it allows you to do spectral editing. So, uh, and then you can remove things like pops and clicks and high frequency sounds like sirens and things. But it, uh, you can do the editing in the, in the external application and then bring it right back into SoundForge. So um, having that feature is really, really powerful and opens, opens you up to using these powerful tools. Okay, so the final feature that I'd like to show you in SoundForge Pro is remote recording. So if you've ever had to record a script or voiceover, sometimes it can be really helpful to have just clear your workspace so you can just look at the script and just read the script, make notes, etc. cetera. Um, it's helpful to have a second monitor in this case, but uh, that's not always an option. So remote recording allows you to clear SoundForge away and all you have is this really handy little remote record interface. So essentially it's a floating transport. I can hit record, play, stop, all this. I can create markers and I can see my level and the uh, status of the time I recorded and how much is left on the drive. So let's go ahead and, and give this a shot. I'm just going to start recording and you can see the time elapsed, it's pretty handy. And all I can hear, I can just focus right on the script and I don't have to be worried about the uh, busy interface of, of SoundForge and I can just focus on reading the script. And it's helpful because then you can drop in markers if you want to go back to a particular section to redo it or fix something. Okay, so let's go back to SoundForge. And as you can see, I didn't record anything, but I did drop the marker here. So really useful. Okay, so hopefully you can see that SoundForge is a really powerful tool, whether it is your sole workstation for doing things like voiceovers or mastering, batch conversion, sound design, you name it, or working as a companion to your existing digital audio workstation. It makes a great companion to applications like Ableton Live that are fantastic for music creation, but the maybe the editing features are a little bit on the light side. SoundForge really allows you to take in, really get in deep and um, edit your files and then bring them back into your application, whether that's a digital audio workstation for music production recording, or a video editor like Vegas Pro, Avid, uh, Premiere Pro, etc. So thanks everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and learned something about SoundForge Pro. I hope you enjoy the rest of Imsta Online. Thanks. Mm -hmm.